after she came to New Hampshire, she was handing out stickers in a hearing in the legislative office building. There were big yellow stickers that said ITL 1589, which was uh, Assault Representative Rogers' first bite at universal background checks. Judy and I sort of hit it right off. So she and her husband had, had come to New Hampshire and she had the courage or the lack of sense, I'm not convinced of which yet, to run for office. So I want to introduce you, Judy Aaron. She earned her bachelor's, she's one of these dumb women, she earned her bachelor's degree in economics, magna cum laude, with minors in business administration and computer science from the State University of New York at New Paltz. That's a great word, Paltz, P-A-L-T-Z. Judy is an active member of the Ackworth community and has served on the Ackworth Budget Committee since 2004. How you do that, I do not know. She is secretary of the Ackworth Community Project, which operates the Ackworth Village Store, writes a monthly column for the Ackworth Newsletter about news at the Village Store. She's also a member, she's from Ackworth, in case you haven't noticed this, the Ackworth Sester, not Sesqua, Sester, Sester Centennial Committee, which organized events to celebrate the town's 250th anniversary. She volunteers for the Memorial Park Project, which seeks to honor Ackworth residents past and present since 1776. Judy and her husband, Mike, have been married for 40 years. They have three grown children who are, and I want you to listen to this, three grown children who are educated, employed, and elsewhere. <laughs> Judy owns her own small soap making business since 2011, enjoys gardening and creating delicious food in her kitchen, lives in Ackworth. Did you know that? She and her husband, Michael, with their dog Sophie and the four remaining chickens, right? She's lived in New Hampshire for five and a half years, moved here to escape. She's a refugee. She's a legal immigrant. To escape the anti-gun madness, massive ta taxation, and government of the state of Connecticut. Boo! Boo! She was an active member, however, of the Connecticut Citizens Defense League and worked to combat the, uh, combat the avalanche of anti-gun bills after Sandy Hook. She's now state rep from Ackworth County, Sullivan County District 7, representing towns of Ackworth, Goshen, Langdon, Lemster, and Washington, and is fighting to preserve our Second Amendments right here in the Granite State. So please welcome my friend, Representative Judy Aaron. <laughs> Hello, Patriots! Good afternoon! I gotta tell you, I'm taking you back on a little bit of a trip to remember. December 14th, 2012, Sandy Hook. 20 kids and six adults, plus two more people, died at the hands of a gunman, a criminal. Our nation was horrified. Any gun owner was horrified. And so do you know what happened? In 2013, the next legislative session, the Connecticut legislative response was 112 anti-gun bills. 112 different ways to disarm us. It was just unbelievable. None of those 112 gun bills would have stopped Adam Lanza from what he did at that school. None of them. How many laws did this person break in his horrible, horrific crime spree? So many. And yet, the legislature chose to put forth 112 
more bills that would have done nothing. We held Second Amendment rallies much like this, many of them, to fight back this assault on our gun community, on citizens who wanted to support defending themselves and their families. We went to hearings, hearings after hearings after hearings for 112 anti-gun bills. We testified for days on end, took off how many hours from work away from our families to go and plead with these people up in the legislature to stop this madness. And these were lawmakers who had no clue about buying, owning, or using firearms, and they were making the laws that would profoundly affect gun owners across our state in Connecticut. Gun manufacturers there protested. Some eventually were run out of the state altogether. And Connecticut, this is a state that was built in part by Samuel Colt since 1855. Yes, Connecticut was a state with a rich history of gun ownership. I look back at this, and even as I was going through it as a citizen and a gun owner in Connecticut, it just was amazing to me how gun owners were vilified. We were made to feel like we were the ones that pulled the trigger that day on Sandy, at Sandy Hook. We were being punished for crimes we did not commit. In truth, it was an opportune moment for the citizen disarmament agenda. New local groups formed with money pouring in from national anti-gun groups. They were salivating over the prospect of a major gun grab in Connecticut. They were exploiting those poor dead children. It was disgusting. It was insanity. And to this day, my friends back in Connecticut, some of which are here today to support us, Thank you, thank you, thank you, Connecticut. To this day, these Connecticut patriots still fight on. And with that, with that, they still fight on and persist. For me, for me and my husband, because of the high taxation, and just the insanity of liberal agendas that we're going through, this poor, poor forgotten state. We chose to live, leave there, and, and move to the live free and die state. Because live free and die really epitomizes who we are in New Hampshire. I find it amazing that five years later, here I am today again, fighting to preserve our gun rights, dealing again with legislators who have no clue about gun ownership, gun use, or how you even purchase a firearm in the state of New Hampshire. This is my stand. This is my line in the sand, and I hope it's yours too, because New Hampshire should not be lost. This is a battle we must fight. Don't let them vilify you. Don't let them silence you. 
Don't let them get away with lies and misinformation. I want every single one of you to be proud to be a gun owner. Be confident in your right to bear arms. Don't let them shame you or blame you. Teach your children that guns are not bad. Because our schools are purposefully brainwashing these kids today to hate guns and fear guns. We need to go and speak out at our school board meetings and let them know you will not tolerate this. We have some bad anti-gun laws this session, and here's what you must do. Call, write, email your legislators, and even the ones that do not represent you. Show up at gun bill hearings. Find Second Amendment people to run for office in your town and school boards. Remember that this Tuesday on Town Meeting Day. Who are the people that you are electing and are they Second Amendment supporters? Encourage your friends or even think of it yourself to run for county and state positions. Support Second Amendment candidates with your time and your money. Write letters to the editor of newspapers call into radio shows, and share on social media pro-Second Amendment articles. Do not be afraid to discuss gun rights with your friends. Educate, don't argue. Know the law, know the facts. Wear your Second Amendment clothing and your logos with pride. It is your right and go and support the stores and thank the stores that sell those things. Be a responsible gun owner and organize local gun safety classes for kids and adults in your communities. Organize gun range shoots and fight the misinformation by offering to take friends to the range or show them how a gun is purchased because they're being fed so many lies. Be a good citizen. I don't have to tell you that, you all are. Help out in your towns and don't give up. Don't give in. Support your pro-Second Amendment organizations and gun ranges and remember that this is your right and it shall not be infringed. I want you to remember Connecticut used to be a very gun-friendly state. Let's not follow the path that Connecticut took. Stay strong and let us be united we must do this. We must fight this. New Hampshire is the very last stand in New England. Amen. It's up to us, all of us. Amen. Amen. Thank you. And God bless you, and God bless New Hampshire, and God bless America. Amen. Um, well, first of all, I'm kind of glad Connecticut went downhill because you can hear, but that's probably not a nice thing to say, but I want to I share something with you that, that Judy did this morning. Those of you who know, we've been uh, taking a beating um, because of our pearl necklaces. Mine happen to be particularly large caliber. Assault pearls. In fact, it's funny she says that. That's what the Moms Demand Action um, a couple years ago decided they were assault pearls. Oh my God. 
But Judy came here today, one of the most generous people we've met, and in honor of what we're doing, purchased this magnificent string of pearls with white gold clasp, and we're going to be auctioning these off. And the proceeds are not going to go to the Women's Defense League. The proceeds are going to join another scholarship organization that will fund essay contests for high school students on why, why we honor our Second Amendment. Judy, I don't know how to say thank you.